This video discusses the solutions to some examples of particle motion using rectangular coordinate system. Welcome to Dynamics of Rigid Bodies. The first problem has the velocity at 10 seconds in the form of 0.1i plus 2j. Then this velocity changed to negative 0.1i plus 1.8j after 0.1 second. We are to look for the magnitude and inclination of the average acceleration. We let velocity at time equal to 10 seconds be notated as v10 and same with v 10.1. We know from the basic motion formulas that acceleration is the change of velocity over the change of time. So from the premise, we have the difference of v sub 10.1 and v sub 10 all over the time difference between 10.1 and 10. Plugging the expressions given for velocities, we get acceleration in terms of i and j and simplifying the terms, we have negative 0.2i minus 0.2j, all upon 0.1, or that is negative 2i minus 2j. With i and j terms already simplified, we use Pythagorean concept to solve for the magnitude, and that is taking the root of the coefficient of i squared plus the square of j, resulting to 2 root of 2, which is 2.83 meters per square second. The inclination is solved the same as the inverse tangent of the coefficient of j over i. That is the inverse tangent of negative 2 all over negative 2 and that shows 45 degrees inclination. With a similar example, we check what happens when there is a change in time. So using the same approach, we take the average acceleration by delta v all over delta t. So plug in the terms for the parameters to come up with a negative 0.2i minus 0.2j all upon 0.25, which is then simplified as negative 0.8 of i minus 0.8 of j. So the magnitude of the acceleration is the root of negative 0.8 squared plus negative 0.8 squared, which is reduced as 0.8 times root of 2, or 1.13 meters per square second. The inclination, on the other hand, is the inverse tangent of negative 0.8 all upon negative 0.8, which is still giving 45 degrees. Example 3 presents the equation of displacement as r is equal to 2 thirds t cubed minus 3 halves t squared for i plus t raised to 4 all over 12 for j. It states that we should find the angle between the velocity and acceleration when t is 2 seconds. Since we are to look for velocity and acceleration, but only given the equation of motion for displacement, we should take the first derivative of r to have velocity. So dr all over dt is v, then take the derivative of the binomial for i and also that for j. The derivative of 2 thirds t cubed is 2 thirds times 3 t squared minus the other term 3 halves times the derivative of t squared, which is 2t. 
For j, the derivative of t raised to 4 all over 12 is 1 twelfth times 4t cubed. Simplify the whole equation to get v is equal to 2t squared minus 3t for i plus t cubed all over 3 for j. With t equal to 2 seconds plugged into the velocity equation, v2 becomes 2i plus 8 thirds of j. From here on, take the angle of inclination of the velocity vector using inverse tangent of 8 thirds all over 2 to have 53.13 degrees. For acceleration, take the derivative of velocity equation, so by inserting d all over dt, before all terms, we have dv all over dt or acceleration equal to 2 times 2t, which is the derivative of t squared, and then subtract 3. For the j component, we have a third of 3t squared. This is simplified as 4t minus 3 for i plus t squared for j. And at t equal to 2 seconds plug into the equation, acceleration becomes 5i plus 4j. From these components, the inclination is computed as the inverse tangent of 4 all over 5, and that is 38.66 degrees. With the two inclinations already identified, the angle between velocity and acceleration can be taken as the difference of velocity and acceleration, that is 53.13 minus 38.66, yielding 14.47 degrees. What could have been the change with the same equation of displacement, but time t is 5 seconds? The velocity is still generated from the derivative of the displacement, which would still show the same equation from the previous example. With t equal to 5 seconds, the velocity becomes v5 is equal to 35i plus 125 all over 3j. And using the i and j coordinates for the inclination of velocity, we get 125 all over 3, all upon 35, with its inverse tangent, giving us 49.97 degrees. Moving on to find the acceleration, take the derivative of the velocity. So dv all over dt is acceleration, which is equal to twice of 2t minus 3 for the i component, then still a third of 3 t squared for j. This is simplified as 4 t minus 3 for i plus t squared for j. Now with 5 seconds place for t, the acceleration turns out as 17 i plus 25 j. And since we have the coefficients already known, we can take the inclination of acceleration as the inverse tangent of 25 over 17 and that gives 55.78 degrees. By illustration, it can be seen that the angle between the two parameters can be taken as acceleration vector minus velocity vector, that is 55.78 less 49.97, which is 5.81 degrees. Another example has two displacement equations, where we are to solve for the magnitude of velocity and acceleration with a series of time. With y equal to 0.25x squared, and knowing that x is 2t squared, we can plug x into y, so both parameters can be in function of time. By placing 2t squared as x into the equation of y, the resulting y is equal to the fourth power of t. Since x and y are given and the required are velocity and acceleration, 
differentiate both x and y twice. Velocity x is twice of 2t, and that is 4t. Vy is the derivative of t raised to 4, and that is 4t cubed. For acceleration, ax is the derivative of 4t, which is 4, and ay is the derivative of 4t cubed, which is taken as 4 times 3t squared, or that is 12t squared. With vx, vy, ax, and ay already figured out, take note that the magnitude of velocity is taken as the root of the squares of both v sub x and v sub y. And the same case is true with acceleration. So if we start plugging t as 2 seconds in both equations, we get the magnitude of velocity as 32.98 meters per second. Acceleration is the root of 4 squared plus the square of 12 times 2 squared, which is solved as 4 root of 145 or 48.16 meters per second squared. The same process is used for the rest. At t equal to 3 seconds, the velocity is taken as the root of the square of 4 times 3 plus the square of 4 times 3 cubed, which is 12 root of 82 or 108.66 meters per second. Acceleration is solved as the root of 4 squared plus the square of 12 times 3 squared, simplified as 4 root of 730 or 108.07 meters per square seconds. With t equal to 4 seconds, the velocity comes as the root of 4 times 4 squared plus the square of 4 times 4 cubed, solved as 16 root of 257 or 256.5 meters per second. The acceleration is the root of 4 squared plus the square of 12 times 4 squared that is equal to 192.04 meters per square seconds. Having t equal to 5 seconds, velocity is taken as the root of 4 times 5 squared plus the square of 4 times 5 cubed, simplified as 20 root of 626 or that is 500.4 meters per second. The acceleration is the root of 4 squared plus 12 times 5 squared, take the square, simplified as 300.03 meters per square second.